Hi guys, welcome to this March uh, 21st, uh, 2014. I'm going to do a short uh, demo on uh, some imaginative sketches. Um, I know some were interested in uh, some of the sketches that I posted on the napkin sketch thread. So I'm going to do a quick demo of some sketching. And this is sort of following along some demos that I'm going to do uh, that are semi-tutorials. They're not exactly tutorials, it's just me kind of freestyling it. But um, I hope you guys uh, get something from it and some takeaways and, you know, uh, what you learn is uh, up to you. So first off, um, <clears throat> you'll have to excuse my voice. First thing that you need when you draw is a good cup of coffee. If you don't drink coffee, find something good to drink. And I'm going to put that aside. So just a few things that I'm going to be using. I know a lot of people are usually interested in uh, the tools that I use, and for some of these sketches, I'm going to be using this. It's a Pilot uh, dual-headed um, brush pen, which is uh, a brush pen that has a thin ink on one side. It's the Futayaku, uh, which has dual tips, and uh, it's a Fude pen, as it's written here. But uh, on one side, it has Usui uh, drawing ink or thin ink and one it has pure 100% black ink on the black cap. So the thin ink has the uh, transparent cap. Uh, this pen here I believe I got from uh, there's a, a maker online I'm gonna have to link it I believe uh, Jet Pins I believe is uh, Jet Pins black, uh, jetpins.com excuse me is the site and um, you know they have a lot of good stuff that they import from Japan so uh, do check it out along with um, some of the other pins that I'm going to be using like uh, as in my last video I described the Kuretake I believe it's the fountain pin number 14, 13 or 14 uh, as well I'm going to be using an assortment of some Pilot high-tech C pins and of course the old classic uh, Pentel pocket brush pin uh, noted by its uh, silver printed uh, pude, uh, kanji on the side of the pen as you can see there. So anyway, um, that and I'm going to also be using uh, some Copic uh, sketch markers, uh, mostly the brush tip uh, rather than the chisel tip. Um, you know, I kind of flip between the chisel tip and the brush tip. Um, so when you see sketches like these, like I've recently posted, a lot of these were done where I used the Copics first and then line afterwards. Uh, sometimes the thin side of the Pentel uh, Futayaku pen. And uh, what I'll do is I'll get like a, a rough and graze and then I'll go over and outline them so that you have some weight and some definition to the details. Uh, the same was for the medium class ship sketch that I did. So, in other words, these were thumbnails that were done imaginative sketches where a lot of uh, the layout for these different shapes and the shape play was done totally with a Copic marker. So I'm going to try to make this quick so I'm going to go through and I hope you can follow along. So for starters I'm going to start off with a C1 and the problem with the C1 is that it may or may not show up on camera very well. So I'm going to go through and just make some heads this you want to try to keep some of your steps a little bit broad but in the general shape of a human head so in other words like uh, you would have a circle and then your jawline center brow chin and the angle of the chin so we're looking slightly down on the chin so these are going to be the basis the foundation in which I'm going to build some of these mech heads off of Put in a slight jawline, the head, and bring out the, some of the neck. And what you want to do is, of course, um, you want to start thinking about some of the shapes in the neck muscles, building up to the clavicle, and then we'll mechanize the bottom part of the neck 
and then we'll start playing with some of the shapes. And one thing with um, drawing stuff like this, of course, is you want to be able to try and pull some angles from different sides of the head. So get used to drawing gesturally um, so that you can position the head. And in these roughs here, since I'm using sort of a, a cross marked head, you know, a lot of the poses are similar because we're just looking at the head, but drawing from the left side of the face pointing this way and drawing from the right side of the face going this way is always a, a good practice to do. So in other words, use your arm, use your drawing arm, uh, don't just use your wrist because there's more movement that can be achieved than just drawing with your wrist. So try to keep your pin upright and balance your pin. Um, holding your pin, one of the things that I've always noticed about um, illustrators that draw well is they have a good hand position. You can always hold, I mean if you think of it, and I think I mentioned this in my last vid as well, if you think of it almost as if you were holding chopsticks, uh, I use the index and the middle finger to use more articulate like form and function, keeping the, the brush upright or the pencil upright. And then I use the bottom two fingers, the pinky finger, just barely rested on the page and use it as a guide for your pressure. So, you know, you can draw, you know, your ticks in, hand position can be, or have a lot to do with the type and the quality of line that you put down. So I'm going to draw here, jaw, this one will be a wide sort of head. A round cylinder at where the ear would be. Major muscles in the neck and front and back, the shoulder, and again the clavicle. And one thing that's always good is get yourself some breath. Um, if you look at a lot of anatomy books, uh, you can always tell that even with drawing things that are going to be mechanical or mecha like, like this, if they're derived from human form, look at the muscles, look at the insertion point of the muscles. The insertion point being like, say, if you have a uh, pex, human pex, and there are certain muscles that flow underneath in an order, the insertion point where its ligaments are actually attached to bone and the overlapping muscle over that is generally what you want to look at in form. And when you do that, then you can layer on fat, you can layer on skin. So I'll push this up a little bit so you can see. So I'm just going to draw in, continue drawing in some of my rough heads here. And then I'm going to go over these in a bit. You can use the broader side of the brush, get some thicker shadow. It's almost sort of an Iron Man like kind of silhouette.
but as far as reference I look at a lot of different things um, Pinterest being one of the biggest it's like an open catalog uh, it's almost as if they made Pinterest for artists it's a way, great way to assemble a large number of ref categorize it um, find what you need search for it and um, sometimes you get some really nice images and sometimes you don't get stuff that's high resolution enough but you can usually find something on there to get you started or to offer a lot of details especially if you're going to be rendering stuff uh, not only by hand like this uh, if you're going to sketch out and do some imaginative, imaginative thumbs but also if you're going to be 3d modeling it comes in, in in play a lot it's a large great resource for that so I'm gonna Okay, so this is scene one. And I'm gonna next come in with a C3. And then we're gonna gradually just build up. Build up a couple of um, layers, if you will, of values. And this method allows you to draw things out and figure out uh, form play, you know, shape play, uh, very quickly. Because um, in a work situation, you may not always have the, the most ideal amount of time to draw. And so you want to be quick and gestural as much as you can. Now what I've gone ahead and done here is I have sped up the film just a little bit so that you guys can um, you know, not have to sit through me uh, going through the whole sketch uh, in you know, just real time. So I've, um, I'm just going ahead and furthering the outline and um, drawing in some definition with a black line. And um, this is a really cool pen. I, I'm, I will say it again just because um, it's called the Futayaku. Uh, it's a white nylon tipped uh, brush pen. And it's really cool because, um, as I mentioned before, you know, being able to go in and draw some translucent lines to lay out um, sort of your ideas and then reinforce those lines with black line makes for a really cool drawing tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to finish this out and then I'll move on to the next. So as I continue on to draw and um, fill out some of these details, um, I'll go back again and this is um, one of those things where I'll mention that, of course, you know, having had the structure of the marker underdrawing, um, this is where, of course, I can come in and start to fill out more detail, 
gives um, some other values um, that will sort of sharpen the look of the drawing. And um, you know, one of the things that you probably saw a few seconds ago is um, drawing and being able to um, add some like symmetry to the drawing. And this really helps is you know with you know drawing and underdrawing um, in markers that not only do you get the value but um, you get to uh, fill out and figure out your symmetry, um, figuring out you know cuts and details of smaller nernies, and um, these sort of things are. You know, you, you sort of add to your own muscle memory and you know, continue it. So I've gone in with a C5, and unfortunately my C5 and C4 markers have um, recently refilled. Um, as Copics uh, have uh, refills that you can uh, use with a needle to refill the pen, um, I would say a word of caution is to make sure that you don't overfill them too much or else you'll get like some really wet almost wash like uh, uh, happy mistakes and sometimes just plain out mistakes that uh, don't work out so great. So every once in a while you'll have to see me probably uh, you know take the charge out of the brush tip of it and uh, you know sort of uh, you know just use some some paper to blot the ink out so that it doesn't uh, spread too widely out of control. And of course these marker strokes I'll be going over and reinforcing in, in black line. So here's a section where um, I'm going to be drawing on this one thumbnail and um, you'll notice that a lot of the, actually the details that were not initially drawn by the uh, C1 rep are later getting laid in by darker marker strokes. And so what I'm trying to do is use like uh, the more broad side of the brush to fill out some of the silhouette. So there's actual, I mean, I mean this, this goes back to kind of what I was mentioning about um, maybe doing things in layers. Um, if you think of them in layers, they're not actual layers. It's, uh, it, it's all at the build up on the paper, but um, going through, adding different values, flushing out the idea, getting more detail going along. And um, it's just uh, sort of a time investment of um, value and silhouette. And so this is where um, you get a lot out of the initial shape play that you get maybe taking the chisel, laying in some um, gradation. So of course when you overlay some of the uh, tones and values over these drawings, you know, you, you get a buildup of um, gray uh, gradations as you stroke and then stroke over some of your, your broader um, gradation until it gets lighter to darker and you get sort of a blending effect. So I've sped up a, a bit and I'm going to take on with uh, just using the Futayaku um, as I had before, but I'm also going to be using the um, Pentel brush pin. And so, of course, using that dark side. But I'm going to start out by just um, putting in some detail using the, uh, using the Pentel brush pin. So I'm going to start on the left hand side of the drawing and continue out. So this is where I get to more of like a, a hardened uh, sort of sketch feel where I clean up things and I try to use the most confident line that I can out of a black line. And so this figure has um, a little bit more of a human quality in it. If the, maybe it's like a pilot and the pilot uh, has half of the face exposed. 
the hard surface around the head. So using like just like the bottom two fingers as sort of a pressure guide for myself as I rest my hand on the paper, I'm going through and just very slightly using the needle ended taper of the brush to um, put in the most finite detail as I can possible. And this is also one of those areas where like especially when you're doing things with them um, like you know a human face or a human form is is um you know like I learned is when you draw too many lines in the face um it has a habit of making characters look uh, you know very aged and very hardened and so um in the finer line that I can get out of the inside of the face if I can keep it down to a minimum it's always good it's always good. So I'm just trying to indicate maybe some cheekbone shadow or you know some of the some of the features and lines in the, the face, and then I'll go through with a, a more fine pin like a, a Pilot High Tech C, and then I'll I'll put in some cross hatching for you know shadows in the face or something like that. So with the left side um, pretty much pinned in, um, you can see here where I'm just taking a black Copic marker and I'll probably continue this on as soon as I finish over some of the thumbs on the right hand side of the page. But um, I like to sometimes frame, I mean they, basically the layout for this um, sketch is that I've kind of randomly drawn in the heads and then detailed them out. and. Um, I really haven't thought about sort of the framing or the lineup. I mean, there's not a whole lot of space in between them because I drew them large enough to give them some detail as I, I drew them out. But um, every once in a while I'll draw in some shadow with a, a thick black uh, marker such as the Copic brush ended marker or the chisel and just um, sort of frame in some, some backdrop shadow and basically push out sort of the edge of the silhouette so that you, you finally get it, what kind of closure that it has. So I'm just going in with the fountain brush pen and um, I'm sort of alternating in between um, the Kuretake brush pen and um, of course the Pentel pocket brush pen and um, you know just alternating tools, filling things out, pretty much getting some general outline of how things are, are going. But um, as you can see the, there's a real big drastic change in between what was initially drawn and then what yeah, it's finalized. So here I'm going to start to transition into the last phase of um, drawing some of the things on the uh, right hand side of the drawing and um, of course just filling out details, further pushing the form of the silhouette and um, adding in some sort of framing black into uh, the drawing so that as um, a, a, a device of um, thumbnailing and communication you visually sort of get the idea of the shape um, and you know this is one of those areas again where um, as you fill out things some of those details you know like a really you know unless they were forethought sometimes they, they generally get um, made up and they are happy mistakes um, when they're created. So what we're looking at is um, we're, I'm drawing in and around at about probably uh, 8x speed in real time. And um, I do this so that you guys don't have to totally sit through uh, a very long and residuous um, uh, drawing process where you, know, you see me working out every bit of detail and you can get it in a shorter amount of time. But again, um, stay tuned. I, I'm gonna probably post more drawings like this. Um, some that will be narrated and some uh, I might just score and put up and uh, show you sort of uh, my working process. But um, thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Um, please do subscribe and comment uh, and you know, uh, stay tuned. Look forward to comments and, and uh, any questions that you might have.